he's one of the people in the world that I'd really love to meet. Neil Gaiman? Yeah, yeah. Um, in case you hadn't noticed, I quite like Neil Gaiman. You do seem to have a bit of a thing. I do. You wait until I get a bookcase in here. <laughs> <laughs> have you got a favourite author then, Adam? Um, Sort of, yeah. Um, I don't read a huge amount because I'm a dyslexia, so I tend, it tends to be difficult to find an author where I can read their stuff to a, a decent level of enjoyment. But the stuff that has fit with my brain is... You should be able to find an author. You work in a library. <laughs> 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 um, but, yeah, Chuck, Chuck um, Palahniuk. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he's great. I like his stuff I find easier to read than most writers, um, especially the short sort of non-fiction stories. Okay. They're quite, they're quite, uh, I made a reference to Chuck Palahniuk on the podcast a few weeks ago. Uh, me and Ross were talking about... Mr. Robot. Have you seen Mr. Robot yet? I watched the first two episodes. Okay. You need to watch more. Oh, uh, okay. I won't tell. Again, oh, this is frustrating because it's the second time <laughs> this has happened. But <laughs> listeners, if you know, if you know what I'm on about, then wink, wink, nudge, nudge, and all that. Nudge is, is it, as good as a wink to a blind bat. Is it, is it almost a, a Fight Club-esque story? Because it feels like it's going that way. Yeah, it is, yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, that will do. Yeah, yeah okay. it is. yes, it is a Fight Club esque story. Cool. Yeah, it's it's a very good one. I think you should check it out. I'm looking forward to see what Rami Malek does with Freddie Mercury. Oh, I can't wait for that. Been reading in interviews again. He just seems just so so humble and so bloody nervous about how it's going to go. Well, he knows so, that if if it doesn't go well, then fans will decimate him. In modern climate, fans are scary, and if it's good. Then it could make his career. Yeah, could spring shot him. Into, yeah, absolutely. You know, this said, it's quite it's quite good to see him because uh, he's in another film with uh, the matey from Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, where they're in prison together. We spoke about it on the oh uh, okay on the yeah, yeah podcast yeah. last week. There's yeah. a trailer for it. So at least he's been kind of welcomed into the acting fold yeah. by Hollywood, sort of thing, before right. it comes out. Before just doing TV stuff and yeah, so he's got some yeah, padding, a yeah. bit of a landing, perhaps. Cool. A parachute, <laughs> a net, a trampoline. Net. Should we introduce the show? We've just started talking. We should just yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a snooze button <laughs> show where we talk about TV, pop culture, movie news, and stuff. And well, we're only going to do this one this week because uh, we did two kind of review shows ish last week, which yeah. didn't actually make it onto the internet until. Uh, Sort of Sunday evening, Monday, no, busy, busy Sunday week. morning. Busy week. Crazy week for me, because <laughs> we recorded late last week, it kind of threw me out a little bit. But yes, there we go. Life. Life. Oh, life. Oh, life. Oh, life. You like Sade, don't you? No. You prefer our theme tune, don't you? Yeah. It goes something like this. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Snooze Button with Mr. Adam Gatrell. Well, hello. Mr. Chris Quinton. Hello. And, uh, well, that's it. Yeah. Duo cast. Run out of Run out of presenters. <laughs> it's us. Hello. Good day. Good evening. Good morning and good night. Exactly. Now, we don't have any uh, listener questions or anything to read out to you this week, but we do still have the competition we going on. We do indeed. Strangeworldcollectibles.co.uk are denoting a... Stranger Things 11, seven inch figure. Yeah, the character 11, the not character 11, 11 figures. One figure of 11. <laughs> and uh, that's, did I say from McFarlane Toys? McFarlane Toys, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so good quality, like made using uh, well, like laser cutty technology yeah. stuff. You laser chamber that. technology. That's the one. And yes, we have a post on our Facebook page explaining all of this. So please go and go and find that post. It's new with the crew, of course, is our Facebook page. Yeah, on there you'll find the two parts to the question, which I'll read out to you anyway. Uh, first part is Rodimus Prime, or Hot Rodimus, actually. Mm -hmm. His uh, his stats, Ross read them out on our snooze button show from the 31st of last month, which was only last week. We'd like to know them, please. That's the answer to your first question. Yes. You can find them online as well. You don't have to listen to the show, but of course we'd prefer it if you did. Second part of the question, which movie would you personally like to see remade and why? So to enter, all you've got to do is email the answer to both of those questions to us. That's snoowiththecrew at gmail.com. You could send it as a Facebook message as well if you wanted to. That's absolutely fine. Just do it privately, otherwise you'll give your answers away. Exactly. But we'll be choosing our favourites 
from the part two of that question to pick the winner anyway. So, yes. So get the first part right and then give us an answer. And if you're the lucky winner... Make it good. Make it good. Good remake and why. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Cool. So, box office. Yeah. Might as well start there. Have you had a look today? Um, I have unfortunately had no internet on my phone or at my job. So wow. I haven't been able to help anyone do anything at work. And on my breaks, I haven't been able to entertain myself by looking up things for today. So I don't know any news. Wow. Okay. The box office as it is then still stands with Solo at number one. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. That's um, not too surprising. And it's not really up there by a massive amount. So is, this, is this box office as in overall takings or just... Just US, right, actually. Okay. Yeah, that yeah, tends yeah. to be what we look at. So I can give you the worldwide take if you're interested in a minute. No, I but just... Yeah, what's obviously like in Avengers Infinity Wars probably it doesn't count as this week's... Well, it's in, in at number four. Let's do the top yeah, five, yeah. shall we? So uh, Solo Star Wars Story at number one with 29.2 million. Deadpool 2 at number two with 23.3 Adrift at number three with 11.5. Avengers Infinity War at number four with 10.37. So 10.4. So that's how much that's made this week. This week. Yeah. So it's still making money. That's that's impressive. But not as much as it could have been, should have been, would have been if, (laughs) if it weren't for Deadpool and Solo. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, but it made a shit ton in its first it weekend. It, so. it's, it's easily ba- made back its money. It's not got the yeah, same problem yeah. as Star Wars, uh, which we reported last week is the most expensive um, Star Wars movie ever made with a production bu- budget of 250. Uh, it's made back 264 now worldwide. Wow. So, yeah, it's got its money back. That's crazy. Before we start talking about advertising, I don't know what those figures are yet, but... They're normally like around £150 million for big budget now, aren't we'll they? We'll have a look into it. Yeah. That said, though, they didn't start advertising until really late. Yeah, that's true. There was quite a yeah, lot of yeah. stuff commercially around for it, but it's not like episode seven where it was a whole year before. No, It was no. literally two months before. I think they've realised that doing it a year before is, is, is kind of good with certain things, but doesn't need to be done with every film. Well, they had to wait for post-production as well, because they re- refilmed yeah. 70% of the movie. <laughs> well, <so. yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, to be honest, most Star Wars trailers don't have anything that's actually used in the movie anyway, <laughs> nowadays. Uh, yeah, Force Awakens and Last Jedi did. Yeah, not not all of it though. Some of it wasn't used. Rogue One. Oh yes, yeah, so yeah. Last Jedi. I think yeah. there were a lot of. Yeah. And Rogue One was just a mishmash Rogue, yeah. of deleted. Scenes. Rogue One <laughs> and uh, Suicide Squad. You just put those in the same basket, don't you? Mm. They just handed over to somebody else. There's a bunch of footage. Rearrange make that a trailer. Like. <laughs> make it. <laughs> make it look fun. Make a music video or a trailer, <laughs> or or a full length movie. Whatever you feel. Yeah. If it tests well, we'll we'll release it. It'll be fun. The audience will love it. We'll make sure they do. <laughs> I think that's the attitude. Like whether people want it or not, we're just going to make a trailer out of whatever they give to the companies. Because I don't imagine they give them the whole film. No. They must just go, "Here are sections of the film that you can make a trailer out of." Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's just whatever's finished at the time. Yeah, yeah. But still, like they must, they must, there must be someone that makes a decision on what's allowed to be used. Unless you're Sony. Yeah, they're a nightmare. Uh, who was it that made Amazing Spider-Man 2 Terminator Genesis Terminator trailers are a nightmare they're, they're constantly giving away the twists like um, Terminator Sal- was it Salvation yes that yeah. was a movie G- gave away the whole storyline in the trailer and in just the poster in the poster yeah what that he was a android that yeah. he was a yeah they just gave it away Terminator. in the poster. It's like oh, they always do it. It's traditionally nice. done with Terminator films, even from the very first one. Yeah, I I don't remember the first one being spoilt for me beforehand though. But then I didn't really go back and look at the trailers. I don't. Yeah, I don't Terminator think I one watch trailers for that one. Terminator one. It says yes, he's a an android from the future, come to mm. kill a woman from the past. Blah blah. And the film opens with a guy that you think, oh, he could be the Terminator. And he's going to yeah, go and he yeah. rips some clothes off of people and, and goes <laughs> off about his day. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger turns up and he's always the hero. Yeah, yeah. And there's no reason why they should have told you which way around it was in the trailer. No, no. Ruined it. Yeah. Same thing in Terminator 2. Yeah, yeah. We went Done in, again. Yeah. <laughs> didn't have to know that the cop was the bad guy, but they told you in the trailer. Yeah. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Anyway, other news. Yeah, news. Modern news. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Watchmen. 
Yes. Do you like the watch, Ben? Yes. Do you like the fact that there's a TV show coming? I'm not sure yet. No? No. Would you like some information that might perk your interest? Go on. It's going to be set in the modern day. Right. So. So is it a carry-on? It's not necessarily a a continuation. The characters that existed in the first one, I say in the first one, in the original Watchmen comic book series, are going to exist or will have existed. Some of them might still be alive, but it's going to be focusing on a new roster of characters. Oh. And it's... But at the same time, the director is saying, yeah, we kind of want it to be its own thing. We want people to know that it's the Watchmen, but it's going to be in its own pocket universe. So why don't they just make something else? I know. It's weird, isn't it? Rather than... Because that's basically what idiots call a soft reboot, isn't it? It can't exactly be... Uh, yeah, you're right. Yes, it is. Yeah, but <laughs> it that's, can't. Ex- that's a stupid. I hate that. It's like if either reboot it, you're a soft reboot, or don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't soft reboots. Oh, we're, we're, it's a new story with new characters, but some of the old characters are sort of there. I uh, don't do it then. So it can't be a direct sequel to the comics because there's no. a direct sequel comic book series out at the moment that folds the rest of the DC universe into oh, that's, it. The, the, that's the second lot of comics. That There, there was a, a, a load of comics a while ago that were technically a sequel, and then the comics at the moment are a sequel to that. that are you brings, sure yeah, that they brings weren't them back in. No, 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 there was some other sequel I read stuff. some prequel comics. Yeah, prequel they did those first. A little while ago. Yeah. It's, ju- it's just all confusing. Batshit crazy, mate. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. I so, just, yeah. Two ways of looking at this. The guy that's producing it was involved with uh, Lost. Wow. But he was also involved with Leftovers, which apparently is very good. I've not seen that. No, nor have I. The idea that someone from Lost is yeah. involved puts me off and massively. And it's a TV series that yeah. could go on for ten seasons. And it's a soft reboot. Ooh. Soft reboot. Could that... be worse. Could be a soft reboot uh, of Lost, couldn't it? Oh. Maybe it is. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's their plan. They'll do seven series, and then in the last three series, they'll make you realise it's actually a soft reboot of Lost. They've all been cosplaying the on the island. The world will not love that <laughs> at all. Just to pre-warn you. <laughs> so, yeah, that that's a spin-off thing. And, well, Silver Sable and Black Panther. Not Black Panther. Black... What's her name? Black Cat? Black Cat, yeah. We uh, mentioned that last week. The fact that it's uh, a script is, you know, being worked on somewhere. It's definitely back on the schedule for Sony. So, yes, they basically that it was supposed to be out in February of next year, I think. Uh, let me just check my notes. Well, I've just looked at a piece of news that's come up in the last five minutes. Um, apparently, they've gone back to the drawing board with the script, though. Yes, so the script is being worked on. Yeah, yeah. So it originally had a February two thousand nineteen release date, but. Uh, Sony gave that to a Tom Hanks movie. So, yeah. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. That's Not really cool. news this, is it? Because we kind of said this last week. Yeah, but. yeah. Well, at least it's been confirmed now. Before, it was kind of partly True. rumour and part sort of released. But, yeah, at least we know that definitely that is the case now. I'll tell you what is comic book news, though. Go on. The Crow. Yes, yeah. I did hear about this a I few days ago. I don't like this. No. I was looking forward to this movie. I love The Crow. I was a bit um, worried about Jason Momoa playing him, but the fact that Jason Momoa has said we weren't happy and it wasn't going to be right, so we're not going to do it until we know it's going to be right. So what's happened... Makes me happier. What's actually happened is Jason Momoa and the director are connected with Sony. Yeah. Now, Sony hadn't closed the deal on distribution with the people that own the, r- the rights to the actual film. Oh, okay. It's five days away from starting uh, filming. Yeah. And Sony have said, well, we can't close this deal. We're walking away. That means that Jason Momoa and the director are coming with us. Fuck. End of movie. At five days before starting to film, that's yep. a lot of people losing their jobs yep. all of a sudden. Absolutely. Wow. Because he said, like, I want to do it, but I, I didn't. I hadn't managed to read in like all the information. But it just sounded like whatever had happened, he wasn't happy about it. But was saying, like, you know, him maybe, and the director were well on well on board for it. They're yeah, tweeting yeah. pictures of Jason Momoa. In yeah, the, what I meant is they weren't happy that it was being stopped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get yeah, what you mean, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you've have you ever read the the original comic books? I own all of them. Ah, cool. Yeah, John O'Barr is it? Isn't that James right? O'Barr. James O'Barr. That's yeah, the one. they're very good. Great artwork. Yeah. Nice. Well, just constantly, well, just all black and white. 
Yeah, I but very, very perfectly drawn black and white, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. as in the style. Because there's that black and white where it's just line drawings of black and white, and then there's Bucky O'Hare black and white, this which is, is mostly crazy. black with a bit and of white. Then, yeah, <laughs> then there's then there's James O'Barr's black and white. Makes um, what's his name? Who did Hellboy look uh, look like he's not using enough black? Um, I don't know who wrote Hellboy. To be honest, Hellboy black and white comics. I can't. Uh, Magnalis. I can never remember his name. It's really bad. There we go. Are you a fan of um, Studio Ghibli by any chance? Yeah, some of it. Yeah, yeah. we get seen... on with some of it more than others. But yeah. yeah, ever seen Tales from Earth Sea? No, nor have I. Not all of it. I found it very boring. Didn't really watch it all. Is that the more recent one, or is it one of the older ones that I've missed? It's fairly recent, I think. It's certainly within the last sort of 15 years. I've found a couple of the Ghibli films quite boring. I've got it in my notes. It's 2006. Oh, okay. It may have been one I've skipped over because it didn't quite sit with me. It's not up there with the greats. Definitely not. But it's going to be remade. Oh. Apparently. Not by Studio Ghibli either. So it's own, the the rights were owned by Ursula Le Guin. I think she was the writer. Right. And she handed them over to Fox just before she died. Oh, interesting. So we're going to get a Fox remake in some way, shape or form. We'll let you know more about it when we do. But whether or not it'll be uh, animated or live action or what, who knows? It's crazy, it's crazy that thing. Like um, Kevin Smith's friend, Mark Bernardin, he... Um said recently on a podcast that they do about um, the fact that he wrote with a comic book writing partner, um, Highwayman, a DC comic. Don't know it. Um, what is it? I'm not sure. I haven't read it myself yet. Um, okay. But it's a comic that they wrote. It was like a six, four, four or six part sort of series. Okay. Um, they did it in a way where they came up with the characters, the storyline, wrote it, but they don't own the rights to it. DC owned all of it. Right. Now it's being made into a movie and he's kind of, he's really chuffed because it's being made into a movie, but he all he'll get is tickets to go to the premiere. What? That's it. <laughs> Even though he created it. <laughs> so although the comic book era, there was people not being given credit for the characters they came up with. And now that's happening in films. Like you see the other creators names like dedicated to and stuff. And the families are actually getting money now for, the fact that their fathers or grandfathers created these characters and never got any respect. It's now happening with comic artists who've come up with characters for companies that are then being made into films. And it just seems That's a shame. horrible, isn't it? Yeah. Really horrible. I may laugh, but yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, nasty. It's, it's just weird because you just think, well... Just, it's the same with uh, any, any industry though, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. You you've got to be careful, giant, you know. careful of the contracts. Yeah. Make sure you pick the specific direction that best suits you but also i suppose in excuse me in mark bernardin's case he's just happy that they want to make his film what's uh, the what's the movie called sorry highwayman highwayman yeah okay is that singular or plural do you know uh singular i think okay so he is a character Highway, oh, oh no! I think man. actually he he said there's characters. So it might be a group, or it might be one character, main character, and other people. But okay. yeah, it's just like I just feel a bit like he's obviously really happy, but he's obviously a bit like, well, all I'm getting is a premiere ticket, and then I might get a credit in the film characters created by. He's like, mm. you know, but the buckets. The, but he, I got my ticket. The so truck, it's all right. Truckloads of money <laughs> are not going to be ending up at his door. I think his words were. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Join the club, mate. To yeah, be fair, yeah. <laughs> Life of a modern writer. Wow. Life of many modern people, me included. That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah. Where's my truckload of money? Oh, we could all do with a truckload of money. I'd be. What would be the first thing you'd spend money on if you got a truckload of Probably money? Probably a truck. <laughs> to keep my money in. <laughs> You're assuming they're taking the truck away. Yeah. <laughs> okay, they're not going to give you the truck as part of it. Probably not. I could buy it from them there and then, I suppose. How much is it going to cost? A million pounds. <laughs> oh, it's it's going to cost a truckload of money. I get my own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe not. Oh, dear. So, um, yes, are you aware of AMC's The Terror TV show, by any chance? No. I've not watched it yet, but it's very, very good, apparently. The Terror. It's, uh, That's the name of the bad guy from The Tick. Oh, is it? Yeah. 
That's interesting. Okay. Because I can't imagine so it it's, is. It's not a superhero thing. Right, okay. It's about um, a lost expedition to the Arctic oh. in 1845. Rad. So, yeah, it's all the, the crazy stuff that they assume that these guys went through and stuff. Ooh. And uh, it's AMC's most popular show after Fear the Walking Dead and... Oh, The Walking Dead and Better Call Saul. Oh, okay. So it's very, very popular. So if you are a fan out there and you are listening, then uh, it's coming back for a second season. But interestingly, it's going to, from here on, be an anthology. So the first uh, first ser- season was based on a book, like I said, about this expedition to the Arctic. Yeah. Second season's going to go off on a tangent and, and be about something else. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Cool. Interesting. All, if, if you're all a fan, sort of you know, real life stuff. Or, I guess so. Yeah. I'd like to think so. Although, is it a true story? Do, do, do. Let's have a look. It might be. It's a fictionalised account. Okay, so it's based on something that happened. Yeah, so it's, it's, something yeah, that happened. Yeah. So John Franklin a went off to the... A dramatization, yes, so exactly. to speak. Yeah. Exactly. The only downfall to all of this is that it's produced by Ridley Scott, but there you go. Well, he doesn't... He's, he's got to do something good to make up for all the utter <laughs> swilly shite that he's poured upon us over the last few years. It's not all been bad. The Martian's great. Yeah, that doesn't count. I watched it again the other night, actually. Yeah, it's a great film. I think it's Matt Damon's best part yeah. ever. Yeah. He's absolutely mind-blowingly good in that film. Yeah. And Donald Glover. He obviously carry... Him and, him and Donald Glover carry that film. Yeah. They're both very, very good in that. I think they're all very good. Even that... Gingerhead woman who I don't Kirsten, really like. Kirsten Wig. Uh, no. Kristen. No. no. Oh, the other one. Um, oh, what's she's going to be in it. Chapter two, isn't she? Um, yeah. Nobody seems to like her. Apparently, people hate working with her. Jessica Chastain. That's uh, the one. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's very good in it as well. Yeah, no, yeah, everyone's good in it, but I think those two, particularly like Donald Glover and um, Matt Damon, I think really, really like show their ability. Yeah, in in that film more than anyone else manages to. Like obviously, Kirsten Wig is still a little bit silly and funny in her part in it. Where's Kirsten Wig in it? She's the assistant. Or on Earth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she's See, she has her serious moments, but she's still almost like too cartoony. She always is, isn't she? Yeah. She can't help it. She's a Saturday Night Live who hasn't moved on from that enough yet. She's still doing the cartoony films. I haven't seen anything with her in that's properly serious yet so it was she was quite serious in downsizing uh, yeah i haven't seen that yet. give it a yeah. go i'd yeah. be interested to see what you think of it but um i think it would split a room yeah i've I've heard i've not heard positive things about it yet it's not a good movie no no <laughs> uh, the ending of it is too convoluted and just all over the place and just tries to do too much I've said this in the review show Con- concept over substance yeah, yeah yeah absolutely um but yeah i'd honestly like to see what you think uh speaking of christian wig though Mm. Wonder Woman 2 Yeah Tigra Tiger yeah. Tiger Tigra It's going to be set okay. in the 80s Oh it is Yes oh, Okay so they're gradually Getting closer to the future in Well you films. say gradually That's quite a big jump Well yeah but <laughs> Four years You know Yeah or Was it World War 1 World the first War 1 Yeah World War 1 Oh yeah so it's yeah. more like 70 years Yeah yeah. <laughs> but, then, but then the jump From the 80s to now 80s to 90s 90s to 2000s 2000s 2010s that's 30 years, so yeah. it's like half of the distance of World War One to the 80s. So Welcome to the math They'll cast. do that one, and then they'll do half <laughs> of that and do like four years, and it'll just it'll be think? good. Yeah. <laughs> just, they incrementally jump closer and closer until they're like catching up with a modern-day film after they've actually worked out how to make good DC films. This is, this is Wonder Woman Part 7. It's set half an hour after the last movie. It's only taken us 40 years to get here, but we're now... <laughs> We're now making good enough Wonder Woman films that uh, DC films which, that they fit with Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that would be interesting. Set in the eighties, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, um, there's not really too much more information being sort of released, other than uh, I think it was 1984, the, the specific year it was set. Oh, okay. But yeah, we'll see. Could be interesting. Speaking of eighties stuff, yeah, go on. Top Gun, oh. the sequel. Do you know what? I've never watched the first one properly. Production has started on uh, Top Gun 2 this week. Right. Oh, I'm excited. You're not excited? Not in the slightest. It's it's the Tom Cruise thing, isn't it? It's not even the Tom Cruise thing. I just... I, I don't care about jet pilots. It's not... 
no, no offence, no offence to them, but it's not. What a, have they done to you? It's not a subject matter that's ever interested me. Like, oh dear. really, like Top Gun, the first one. I tried watching a bit of it a few years back with someone who's really into it, and. Oh, I, it's cheesy as hell. It's crap. Like, it's really terrible. I just don't I, like I, it. I think it's, it stands up better as a memory than it would do. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and and I don't want to watch a film about jet pilots now either. Like, no offence to them. Like, unless you're a Red Arrow, like, I'm not that bothered. Red and even Arrow, the Red Arrows, the I don't want to watch a film about Red Arrow pilots. I just, I'd rather watch them just fly over doing their stunts and job done. The thing is, a Red Arrows movie would be quite boring, I imagine, wouldn't it? Just yeah, a lot of training maybe. and stuff. They'd have to turn it into a romantic comedy or something. Yeah, and then or, it would uh, just wouldn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or do, like, Police Academy. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, actually, if it was done <laughs> Dad's Army-style Police Academy of think? Red Arrows, maybe that would work. A little bit of British humour, that might what, work. old men? No, 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 <laughs> but, like, that sort of cheesy British humour that, okay. ha- that, that you have been watching. Yeah, okay. there we go. That's the new BBC comedy that have you been watching that they need to do. If you're listening about to BBC. Red Arrow Corps. You're welcome. Synchronised pissing. Have you ever seen that sketch? No. <laughs> oh, right. It's got Marek Larwood in, and it's a load of Red Arrow pilots, and they go in... It's from... I don't know what's from. I think it's some kid's TV show, and they all walk into the toilets together, and then the one in the middle, who's obviously, like, the main dude, like, gives some, like, flight commands, and they all turn towards the urinals and then they move in an arrow formation and then they all piss from different distances no. and then move Hang and on, change. Did you say this is in a kid's show? Yeah, I think so, yeah. You don't, what? You don't see their cocks out or anything, <laughs> or, like, but you can see that they're in a toilet and that they're going to toilet in formation. And right. It's very funny. But, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to, to find out that. what that's from. And, uh, yeah, see it. if you can yeah, chuck yeah. it on our Facebook page, doesn't it? Yeah. Speaking of stuff that's quite funny, Taika Waititi. We like him, don't we? I love him. You know about his new movie? Yeah, I'd the lick his face for a chance to go to the premiere. Jojo oh, yeah. Rabbit. Yeah. So it's the one that's like a Anti- satire. Anti-satire Nazi thing, comedy. Yeah. Yeah. With him playing Adolf Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he uh, he's stuck a photograph up on Instagram this week of him in costume, but in a mirror, kind of. No, no, not next to a mirror. But like flipping off uh, a picture of Adolf Hitler. Yeah, yeah. And it got like 110,000 likes in a couple of days. <laughs> nice. It's quite cool. Yeah, yeah. I've he's, got a lot of time for him. He's got a good sense of humour. Yeah. What's the kid that was in... Uh, Deadpool 2. Yeah, yeah. Who's also in... What movie was he in? From Taika Waititi? Um, Hunt for the Will. Oh, that's people. the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he's going to be in Godzilla vs. King Kong, apparently. Julian Dennison. That's the one. Yeah. Godzilla Kong film. yeah. yeah. Which I I like the idea of because I quite like both properties. But yeah, I'm I'm I didn't yeah, I I I like a good monster fighting film. And although I had issues with the the army soldiers plotline in Godzilla and the fact they didn't actually focus on the amazing Japanese scientist who knew what was going on and his storyline and in then, the new yeah one, yeah uh, Godzilla okay. The one with, what's his face from Breaking Bad? Yes, yeah. Yeah, they focus too much on the military son and not enough on the characters that are actually interesting. And then with Kong Skull uh, Skull Island, it was just... It, there were some really good bits in it, but there were some weak bits in it, so... Yeah, there were a lot yeah. of really, really terrible things but wrong with that film. I'm, st- I'm still, <laughs> still up for more monster movies. The yeah. thing is, if they at least if they get 50% of the movie right, it is just pure entertainment. Yep. And I'm I'm happy with That's that. That's all that matters with a monster movie. Yeah. It's just got to have a fairly decent When they try and take them too seriously. And really good looking monsters. Yeah. If they take it too seriously, it ends up just becoming like, oh, for God's Nothing sake. too cheesy. It doesn't need to feel like an anime. No. It just needs to be a good, solid, sometimes terrifying. Like monsters. Sometimes funny monster movie. The monsters movie called Monsters. That I what really that? enjoyed that. The guy's trying to get across Mexico. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I really like that. There's a sequel as well, isn't there? Yeah, I haven't seen the sequel. Nor have I. The first one was really good. And you don't really see a monster. No. And it's all left down to the imagination until quite near the end, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good Mm. one. (laughs) Would you like something... This is really bloody interesting. A Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Uh, I am always up for more animated Sonic. I think animated movies, fine. Animated Sonic, for me, doesn't work. 
I find the cartoon like an which, attack on which, my senses. Which cartoon? Oh, the but I've only seen the one. Right, because there's the really bright over yeah, the top cartoon. Right, probably sounds like the one you would love. The later Sonic cartoon. It's really? it's set in a world where, like, Eggman or Robotnik has basically decimated most of the play the area. Right, and Sonic and a group of other characters, Tails, Knuckles, and others are basically like going in sort of incognito into his areas to get information and try and take... They're like a rebellion, basically. And right. there's these robots that are like proper, full-on, stand-tall robots. And it's a lot better than the uh, original cartoon. Okay. Um, and that's, yeah, that was that was very, very much kind of like... Is it computer-generated? Uh, no, hand-drawn animation. Um, okay, then I'm more on board than I would yeah. be. So if if they could do a film that kind of follows that kind of idea and isn't too overly colourful, but still kind of gives you the bright funness of Sonic, but also has an interesting story, then I'd be well on board. Cool. Now it's the it's been handed over to Paramount apparently the the, the right. Uh, development rights, and it's going to be half live action, half computer generated. Right. It sounds as if Sonic is going to be voiced by James Marsden. Oh, okay. Do you know there who was he is? The yeah, guy yeah. That plays Teddy in Westworld. Yes, yeah. Cyclops. When Cyclops, Cyclops was yeah, that's rubbish. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I suppose Sega have got to answer to, uh, well, the Mario news, haven't they? The fact that we've got a, yeah. a Mario and Luigi. And, and there was also film the rumours the other day about um, Paul Rudd being connected to Sonic. So, Oh, really? Yeah, whether they, they were just rumours. Maybe it so. was Paul Rudd and James Marsden's actually taken the yeah the part. I don't know. To be honest, like, I just... Uh, I know someone that worked on the X-Men films and met James Marsden and said he was an arrogant, stuck-up prick. He does look a bit arrogant. Towards but you can lots, tell. Of lo- lots and lots <laughs> of cast members, he was just really unpleasant. Really? Yeah. Which is a shame. It is a shame. But then that's probably why his dick, Cyclops was a rubbish version of Cyclops. <laughs> Good. Know, I'm glad maybe, his version maybe. of Cyclops was rubbish now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, we've also got a live-action Pikachu movie coming as well, haven't we? So, uh, uh, yeah, the rise of the classics, really. Well, it's the rise of the Japanese gaming industry into yeah. film. Well, it's their turn, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? We've had retro. Well, in honesty, we just need a good computer game movie, don't we? Just one. Something. Something's got to give. Yeah, I'm trying to th- uh, Mortal Kombat, the first one, was, yeah, was fine. It was it was a good enough. It's not film. great. It's not fantastic. Oh, I love it. You, you I've couldn't stick it. it in your top ten movies of all time, could you? Uh, it's in my top twenty. It's not in my top ten. What? Yeah, I love it. That's too high in the ranking. For, no, nah. it's a good film. Is this, is this the one with the uh, guy from Highlander in it? As as Raiden? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the yeah, first the first it. Mortal Kombat, not the second one. The second one is atrocious, abysmal, awful, trash. Um, but the first one I like, it's a standard martial arts movie, but it's just the characters have got abilities rather than just being martial artists. There you go. There's my favourite computer game uh, movie of all time. It's the animated Street Fighter movie. Uh, That's still, Yeah, I still haven't seen any of the animated Street Fighter films or series. Just watch the first one. Yeah. It's good. Okay. It, it's uh, completely like... In line with all of the characters in the in the not cool. like the movie that screwed around with yeah, the backstories yeah. and stuff, uh, it's yeah, it's faithful and all the characters are very well presented. Ooh. You get to see Chun Li's boobies, what? and yeah, <laughs> it's a shower scene. Why with is Chun-Li. that happening? I don't know. It's, she's in a shower. What? <laughs> and when I was twelve, that was important. <laughs> so you know. So the film, your view of the film is quite tainted by your uh, In honestly, no, it's a very of good bit age. of anime. It's, it really is, <laughs> yeah. truthfully. I've, I've seen trailers Childishness of the part, it is a very good, cool. very good anime. I'll give it a watch. And Vega's great in it. He's Vega? Really cool. oh, oh, yeah, meaning... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hang on, what was his... Do, 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 do. That's not how his theme tune went. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I'm just trying to work out which character names were swapped, whether he was one of them. Oh, right. Was it just M. Bison and uh, who was the boxer? Sagat. No, that was a kickboxer. Balrog. Oh, yeah. Bloody yeah. Balrog. So, yeah, M. Bison's actual name, character name is Balrog. And oh, Balrog's okay. actual character name is M. Bison. Weird. But they had to change it because of Mike Tyson. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. it was changed for the American and British market. Right. There you go. Fun fact for the day. Random. Ta-da. Random. Speaking of boxers, though, yes. Sylvester Stallone is working on a biopic of 
boxer Jack Johnson. I always thought he was just kind of a cool, funky guitarist that, <laughs> that people listen to when they're travelling. But No, he's a very uh, good boxer from uh, back in the day. Apparently he was the first African-American heavyweight champion. He was indeed. In... twenty, Yeah, real early on. Like, he was born in... Of, no, in my notes. He was born in 1878 and died in 1946. Yeah, I think it was early, early... Because a, a lot of the boxers back then that were champions were older than boxers are now as well. Right. They're like, a champion in boxing now is like in their 20s quite or 30s. You had to spend a lot of time Whereas putting on weight. Back then it was like 40s. Like right, a lot, okay. of, a lot of the best boxers were like a lot older. Yeah, okay. And that changed very quickly um, after sort of wartime. Got, yeah. So yeah, mm. Sylvester Stallone, do you, do you rate him as a director in um, general? Have you seen... Um, the Expendables was fun. Yeah, well, it's not, not really the Expendables film. that I'd really pick out as the best. <laughs> <No>. um, <what's laughs> I don't the, think anyone would. <laughs> what's the Rocky spin-off? Um, Creed. Creed. It's amazing. He, was he... he, he direct, oh, no, he didn't direct it. No, he didn't it. direct it. Uh, no, it's no, the guy no, that no. directed Black Panther, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 Ryan oh, Coogler. Don't take that away yes. from Ryan Coogler. Sorry, Ryan. Whoa. Sorry, mate. Whoa. Get people angry. your beer, mate. Sorry. No, I, I, do you know what? I can't really think of anything that Stallone's directed that I would... That sticks in my head. Rambo Five. Yeah, it doesn't stick in my head. I love that film. That's in even, my top twenty. No, do you know I can't, <laughs> even, I can't even remember which one's which out of the Rambos after the second one. Okay, Rambo Five is the one that should stand out. Hang on, is it five or four? Rambo Four. Rambo Five is coming out next year. Oh, the Rambo okay. Four is the the one that should stand out because it's absolutely like no holds barred. It's it's bloody as hell, violent horrendous like in your face like yeah oh, i don't know if i've seen gratuitous that gratuitous violence whereas the others are all a bit tongue-in-cheek uh, i don't know if i've seen that one then. you should go and watch it oh, okay. honestly it'll yeah it'll surprise you okay it's very good <laughs> is that the, is that the one in parks and rec that chris pratt is describing when he accidentally breaks the tv and he's talking about gunning down people it. on the side of a bank yeah, with a, there's a machine big old, gun on a boat. And just, like a massive, like, yeah. what what do they call that? Like a 22 millimetre round jobby. Yeah, yeah, some ridiculous like armour piercing thing. one of those big guns that chops you in half. Yeah. And you get to see that all the people getting chopped in half. Oh, wow, okay. It's so amazing. Cool. <laughs> but the special effects are very convincing. It's quite, yeah. It's been yeah a while be prepared if you're going to go and watch like it. You know, yeah. yeah. Don't watch it with people that are a bit squeamish. And that'll do for the snooze button. Yeah, I reckon, because we're doing things a little bit differently this evening. Yeah, we're not we being are. constrained by time. No, but that's about all the news. That is. Should we put the snooze button noise in anyway? Yes. Okay, just, just for, for time fun. Sake. Just Here for you fun. Go. Happy now. Mm, I'm a bit disappointed. I was expecting well, yeah, more. Yeah, because I put it in in post, so you yeah. probably yeah you didn't. I was get expecting a lot more. Were you? Yeah. I what, don't know. Like I don't know what whizzy but... bang poppy tune yeah. or something. Yeah, I, I don't, don't know. know. Yeah, maybe I should redo like something for the snooze button to make it more interesting. <laughs> you know, because don't worry about that it. That classic kind of. <laughs> I think that's good enough. I think that's good enough. Wakes people up, I reckon, if they're trying to listen to our podcast while they go falling to sleep, asleep though. on a bus <laughs> 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 on YouTube with a phone. I'm up, mum. Oh, okay. Oh, what? I'm on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Right, trailers. Yeah, Ant Man and the Wasp. I love it already. There's a new trailer. Did you see it? It is, it, yeah, it just looks like great fun. Every, does, every bit of it, every time. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. Got to know a little bit more about the bad guy, the ghost. Yeah. So they say in the trailer that they've unleashed her. So do you think she's come from like the quantum realm, or they've done something to somehow mess her up? She perhaps she's like one of these classic bad guys who's like tragic backstory. Maybe she's Wasp's mum. Ooh. Janet Van Dyne. Maybe. Or whatever. I could get confused to which one's which in this universe. The mother, anyway. Yeah. Could be. The one that's been lost in, yeah, in, the in there realm. all this time. Yeah. It's possible. Because she could have gone completely mad. She could have gone... Yeah. Well, you'd go a bit nuts, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, 50 years in a Stir place crazy. Never Nothing has. to do. That's like a million years or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. You'd yeah. be like that little, little person that they put oh. inside the computer in uh, Black Mirror. Yeah, the Black Mirror White Christmas yeah, Christmas yeah. special episode. Oh, that's a brilliant episode. I love it. But that's not talking about Ant Man and the Wasp. But no. uh, yeah, that's it's not too long until it comes out, is it? July? Uh, yeah, July. Yeah. So we're nearly there. Yeah, definitely going to the cinema for that one. Yes. All of these trailers are on our Facebook page, of course. Always. Go and have a look. Tell us what you think if you fancy it. 
The Meg that had a new trailer this week. Is that the Jason Statham? It is. Shot? I haven't seen the trailer. I I I I, I don't know. I uh, the idea of taking ridiculous B movies and and old books of B movie style books, or whatever you'd call them back. I don't know what a book version of a B movie is, and then like chucking big actors in it. I just don't. I don't know if I can handle it. There's been too many Sharknados for me to care about this yet. <laughs> Book version of a B movie depends depends yeah. when it was written, I suppose. Well, yeah, yeah. Penny Dreadful was an old one. Oh, okay. That's where the name comes from? Right, right. Another fact for the day. Yeah, it's, da, like, da, da, yeah, it's like a Victorian Chris's throwaway. Fact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a Victorian throwaway comic tra- type yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. Penny Dreadful, and oh, and Mills and Boone. That's oh, another no. throwaway for you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Anyway, yes. <laughs> the Meg. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't seen it. Is it. Does it look good? No. Okay. It looks like it should. <coughs> no, no, no. It, it when you like say a... it looks like it should, as in it looks like it'll be good fun because it's taking the piss out of it, B movies, or it looks like it should, as in it's it looks as bad as piss. a sci fi film. I think it fits right in there. Oh, right. Like, okay. I'm pretty sure it's just a, a hammy action film with a big fish. Oh, God. Like a cross between Piranha and Jurassic World. Yeah, then that doesn't sound appealing to me. No, no. I the one a little while ago with the woman stuck on the rock and the great whites. I've not seen that yet. It's Is p- that shallow? Shallow. Yes, the yeah. shallows. Yeah, the shallows. Brilliant film. Yeah, yeah, really, really good. It's the best shark film since Jaws in my okay. eyes. Um, there's been a lot of okay shark films, but that one's like actually very, very well done. There's there's some bits in it. It's just her, right? All the way through? Uh, pretty much, yeah. There's some characters at the beginning and in sort of moments of thought, but it's, yeah, it's pretty much her all the way through. And it's, yeah, I, I liked it a lot. Cool. I might go and check that out. I need a movie to watch Really good, week. Really good seagull in it as well. A really good seagull? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean that. Mine? Uh, yeah. Mine? <laughs> Mine? Or is it better than that one? <laughs> Poor boy. <laughs> Have you seen... Have you seen a trailer for a film called Poor Boy by any chance? No, Adam? I am one. I'm yes. <laughs> we can all relate to this. Uh, it's Michael Shannon. He picks right, up a yeah. lot of interesting parts outside of like the big Hollywood stuff. Have you noticed this? Like, yeah, I've never really seen him in anything else though that I can think of. Go and look him up on IMDb and look at some of the films. This one, this particular one, Poor Boy, is about a rodeo clown, and he's playing the rodeo clown. But it's like uh, there's a load of bank robbers. There's a load of bank robberies and stuff going on in the trailer, and I can't work out where Michael Shannon oh. fits into the story. And it's it all looks a bit arty. So it's a film about a rodeo clown, but, but there's bank robberies in the trailer. Yeah. What's it called? Poor Boy. Oh. Not Old Boy. Oh. Poor Boy. Oh. Have you found him yet? I have found him. So far, I know he has two children. <laughs> um, he was in... Bad Boys 2, which I don't remember him being in. Nor do I. Um, Iceman, I haven't seen. Man of Steel. Yeah. Yep. Shape of Water, didn't know yep. he was in that. He's very good in that. Uh, Mud. Mud, I think, don't is know. the one about robots. I think that's one of the ones I'm thinking of. Oh. Go on, what else? Um, Midnight Special. Midnight Special is a very good film. It's very, quite weird about a little boy that's got like special powers and they're trying to transport him from one place to another. Oh. Uh, yeah. Really good. Really worth watching out. Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. Was he in what? Groundhog Day? It's just down as Fred. So Bizarre. I'm assuming it was a small role. Um, in, he was in Chain Reaction as Flower Delivery Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was in Chicago Cab as Crackhead. Amazing. Uh, there's a load of films I've never heard of. Um, and he was in Scrubs as the janitor, wasn't he? Pearl Harbor. No, it wasn't him. I'm joking. But <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Pearl Harbor, Vanilla Sky, Eight Mile. Kangaroo Jack. <laughs> really? Yeah. He's done quite a lot, but... He's done a hell of a lot. There's a lot there that I've never heard of. So he's cropped up in a lot of films without you realising he's there. Yeah. And he's also... He takes on these little arty, like I say, like left field kind of projects in right. between like big Hollywood stuff. I guess like Woody Harrison. He does that sort of thing, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. You know, just does stuff for the love Does independent films and then yep. jumps back to a big budget. Yeah. Makes, your mon- makes his money where he needs to and then does sort of sideline stuff like Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well, well, Michael, I learned something today. There. 
Oh Every day is a school day. Uh, Suspiria. Do you know what that is? Suspiria. It's a classic Italian horror movie. It rings a bell. It's like the 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 titular kind of like nineteen sixties. If you're on acid, you should probably watch this film. Okay. Well, I feel like I am, so there's maybe a, I should. There's a remake coming, which is also Italian. <laughs> But there's a trailer for it. Go and go and check out the trailer. It's, it's I'll give it just a watch. looking weird. Do you know what? I prefer, like, out of all the horror films I do, I'm not a massive horror fan, but all the horror films I do like have been either Spanish, Italian, or Japanese. Okay. Uh, they do, yeah, yeah, they they do, know how they to... do horror much better than British and American films have done recently. Especially the Japanese, yeah. I'd say. Oh, and Koreans as well. Yeah, yeah. I think The Ring is originally Korean, isn't it? If uh, I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think the Japanese yeah, maybe, one is based yeah. on a Korean movie. Yeah, 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 that rings a bell. Can't remember what it was called, though, but we may be wrong. Who knows? Probably something Say like The we, Ring. I. Yeah. I think it was called The Ring something. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, anyway, we'll forget about all uh, <laughs> incarcerations from other countries. <laughs> incarcerations? That's the wrong word. <laughs> That's not the right word at all. <laughs> Where was all your prisoners. mind going? We'll forget about all prisoners. <laughs> Is it because you mentioned Korea and you're worrying Maybe. about the people of North Korea being incarcerated? <laughs> What's the word I meant? I have no idea, mate. I'm lost. <laughs> well, Interpretations? <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? I'm tired and I've just drunk a load of coffee. You did drink a lot <laughs> of coffee. For anyone listening, I've just watched him down like a pint of black coffee, yeah, basically. Yeah. Well, I've had a long day. <laughs> anyway. Go on then. What's next? Do you like Emma Thompson? Is she the one that was in uh, the Nanny McPhee movies? Yes, yes, she yes. Is. I've seen her in a few films that I really like her in, and then I've seen her in a couple of things where I've gone, meh. She's so, a very good actress, yeah, generally, yeah, though, isn't she? Yeah, and very, she's very good. She's in a quite an interesting looking court drama um, about a young lad that's got leukemia. Right. And his family are Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh. And it's the courts trying to decide whether or not they should force him to have blood transfusions and such like to save right, his life. Right, okay. Pretty uh, emotional stuff by the looks of it. Yeah. Go and have a look at the trailer. May not be for you, but I'm certainly going to watch it. Yeah. I like that sort of thing. Something I, that really I, pushes buttons. You I, know? I do when I'm in the right frame of mind. Yeah. Sometimes, especially with some of the people I work with in some of the jobs I do, stuff like that is part of the reason that I work with them, things like okay. that. So it's it's quite difficult sometimes to watch those things. A few years ago, wouldn't have bothered me. Now right. I kind of find it a little harder. Yeah, fair enough. So, yeah. Emotionally impacting. Yes, yeah. Bloody hell, I cried at Infinity War twice. Did you? Yeah. Blimey. Yeah. I, I turned of... into a massive softy. <laughs> I can't even watch a, a, like a proper decent zombie film anymore. The Thanos bit with uh, the daughter... Gamora. Yeah, that, yeah, that was a little bit of a tearjerker for yeah. me. Yeah, and I, I, Iron Man and Spider Man. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, that got me. Okay, like it didn't re- get me at all. Got me right deep down inside. Got you right there, man. Yeah, yeah, right there. yeah. Oh. Just broke something a little bit inside me in a good way. A lot of people were posting online to say that they'd been emotionally, yeah, hit by it. Shall we and, say? And one of my cousins watched it with her son, and she's never watched any of the Marvel films, and she was. Absolutely drawn in right from the beginning. Really? I loved it. That's interesting. Absolutely loved the film. How bizarre. Yeah. You don't know any of the characters. I think she sort of knows of some of them, but right. she's never watched the other films. And they went to see it on holiday, and she said it was like, what was it, a, a roller coaster ride of emotions and fantastic excitement. Okie dokie. So, yeah. Five stars. My mate's mum. Yeah, don't, don't, don't think it'll be five stars, but yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yes, Widows, that's another movie that's coming very soon that looks very interesting. Um, it's a cop drama, adventure, thriller type thing. Uh, and check out this cast. So it's John Berthnell, Viola Davis, Michelle Rodriguez, Colin Farrell, Robert Duvall, and sadly Liam, Liam Neeson. But <laughs> <laughs> but that's quite a cast. Yeah, give or take some Liam Neeson. Sometimes yeah. he's good, sometimes he's not. It says with Liam Neeson, so I take it right, it's a, a okay. bit of a, a smaller part for him. And same with Robert Duvall, actually. Okay. But still, sounds, sounds like a good cast. cast. Yeah, yeah. Look at the trailer, it looks like a really good film. Cool. I like the look of this a lot. Uh, Yardy, that's got its uh, new trailer this week, which is Idris Elba's directorial yeah. debut about a gangster uh, from like Kingston. 
nice Kingston, Jamaica, who his brother's killed and he uh, he ends up being sent to London to get him away from it all. Oh, okay. But then the person that's killed his brother ends up in London as well. And ah. it's like him being drawn back into... Well, I don't think he ever really gets out of the crime world, but still. Yeah. Looks very interesting. It's cool. not had great reviews, but I'm I'm going to go and check it out, I think. You, okay. You're a bit of a fan, aren't you, of uh, Idris Elba recently? Yeah, yeah. His comedy show's great, so I'm willing to give something he's chosen that he's directing. I'll give it a go. I'm willing to take a chance on it and see what it's like. Take a chance, take a chance, take a chance. Take a chance. Uh, yeah, don't do that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you like to have it's, it's bad enough that they're getting back together. They are, aren't they? I saw that in the news. It's terrifying. We're talking about ABBA in case you didn't yeah. recognise my... Uh, <laughs> didn't realise from my handy hint. Terrifying idea. <laughs> they look good, though, for their age, you've got to say. But anyway, it's probably all the money. Um, <laughs> Jennifer, Garner, <laughs> Jennifer Garner's got a new movie. It's another, oh, right. another revenge movie, because we like a revenge movie. With Jennifer Garner? Yeah, I know. It's quite surprising, mm, isn't it? Yeah. So, so her daughter is killed by some cartel right. mofos. Yeah. Gunned down a, a little girl and her husband while they're right. out for a walk, you know. When did she last do a good film? I don't know. Is I'll she really I'll worth... i IMD a bit. Uh, yeah. IMD a beer. Is she really worth having I'll have in to look her, her up. revenge film? I don't know. Anyway, look, this, yeah. it, it, it looks like it's, it could be quite fun. So, so she gets... Her family get gunned down and then... Uh, she goes off on a little, you know, training montage for five years. Five years? And then comes back and goes on a rampage, killing... To be honest, though, after the film Revenge that came out recently with the girl um, falling on the, the tree... Yeah, have you seen it? Uh, yes. Oh, have you? Um, Was it any good? It's brutal. Um, yeah? So any other Revenge film involving the main character being... A woman has got to now stand up to that film. Yeah, true. That's exactly what I thought of when I saw yeah. this trailer. And I don't, I don't think course. Jennifer Garner's a good enough actress to stand up to that film. Go and have a look <laughs> at, the, at the trailer. It looks it looks fairly interesting. Um, that's called Peppermint, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's really Strong. unlike the name. Go and see a revenge film, Peppermint. Strong title. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doesn't really sound like, you know, John Wick, revenge. Yeah, if they'd called John Wick Peppermint. after his puppy... Yeah, and called it Snuggle Puss. <laughs> wouldn't have had the same effect. Exactly. People probably wouldn't have made as much effort to go and see it. Peppermint is like the pet name that she's got for her daughter, apparently. So. Amazing. Excuse the crying baby in the background, if you can hear that. Yeah, a new a new, uh, a new shop's open next door where you can buy brand new babies. <laughs> not second hand. No, thankfully. not second hand. Anyway. It's a stork shop, or whatever they call it. Stork they? shop? Yeah. I don't want to ruin the stalks are us. Uh, they they used to be babies are us. Didn't look they? who's stalking. <laughs> no, that sounds wrong. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no. Right off of that, let's carry on. That's it. That's all the trailers. Thankfully, <laughs> oh, amazing. Did you um? <laughs> did you see uh, the trailer? Oh, it's not. Yeah, go on. I think I know what you're going to say. Uh, probably not. Go on. Uh, did you see the trailer for, um, oh, what was it called? The newer trailer for uh, Happy Time Murders. Newer trailer? Yes. So there's another one, is there? Yeah, it's, not, it's not much different. Um, it's just got a very overly extended scene of him shooting just silly string everywhere. Uh, okay, so is this not the Red Band trailer that we had before then? No, wait, well, it's another Red Band trailer, but it's, it just seems longer than the first one. It's got, like, extra little bits okay. um, in that scene. Um, I, I, Yeah, I don't know if it's it's an easy-to-find one, but it was, yeah, it was very funny, and I'm well up for it, especially after the fact that Sesame Street's tried to sue them. Have they? Yeah, they tried to sue them over the having the, the thing, uh, uh, all street and no sesame on their um, <laughs> posters, and they tried to sue them, and the court, uh, the judging court, turned around and went, "Well, no, because they've not just put Sesame Street, and also like they're making it blatant that they're nothing to do with you. Plus, also they they really adore you and like quite like you, and you've also done your own versions of The Walking Dead with the Cookie Monster and stuff in. So, have if, they? If you can do things one way, why can't yeah, other do companies do it the other? Yeah, yeah. You know." I wish somebody would tell us, uh, tell religion this, you know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Religion. 
South Park, they say it best. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, you know, everyone can take the piss out of Christians as much as they like. Yeah. But as soon as you say something about Muhammad, ooh. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's this, yeah, like it's the same with a lot of things. Like, and, and I'm glad the courts kind of went, no, sorry. Like, that's, Am I allowed to say Muhammad? Yeah, you can say it. You just can't. You can't draw him, can you? Yeah. Okay. No pictures. Good job we're not on TV, isn't it? It's like basically everyone can. Everyone compared to Mohammed is seen as paparazzi. You'd be. Uh, you'd be very tempted, wouldn't you? Oh yeah. If you had a TV show that was oh. like a podcast. If I had a cartoon. If I had yeah. a cartoon series, he'd be in background of scenes all the time. <laughs> so would Jesus. So would Moses. So would uh, Ganesh. Like all, all of the cool gods and and prophets and stuff would be in it somewhere, just just because, like, why not? Superheroes of our past, yeah, you know exactly. They all got on. Why can't we? <laughs> <sighs> Fifth extinction. Here we come, and it'll be a religion's <laughs> fault, won't it? Yeah, or a big asteroid. People will still pray to that. Though. Or Donald Trump. Or Donald Trump. He's a big <laughs> asteroid. Uh, Asteroid's another name for turd. It'd be even it? funnier if Theresa May's the one to turn around and surprise us all by causing the main end. Yeah, that's true. It's very true. <laughs> be like what? Really? Actually, you, you weren't really... even a good enough politician to get voted in. How the ma- how the fuck did you manage to end the world? <laughs> Actually, I'll retract my opinions on Donald Trump because we've got quite a few listeners in the USA. Hello, and I realise that at least half of you really love that guy. So, I got yeah. nothing against. I got nothing against the guy as a as a comical part of American society I just think most world leaders including our own here are just laughable now yeah yeah we've all got the same problems yeah. to be fair yeah it's happening all over God, look at Russia <laughs> they love yeah they, their people love him as well yeah yeah absolutely yeah this is not a political podcast. no 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 anyway <laughs> the other trailer that I thought you were going to mention is Wreck-It Ralph yeah because Wreck-It Ralph 2 Ralph, Ralph Breaks the Internet just got a new trailer today. And it's this really evening. good. It does look like, very cool. Surprising, like, things in it that I wasn't expecting to see Disney go for. See, I'd forgotten that it was a Disney property. So I kind of, when all the, there's there's a bit in this trailer where all the like, Disney princes, princesses uh, pop up and start, like, generally taking the mickey out of the well, whole. It's self-satire. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, like, self-satire with an actual decent strong point to make, which yep. is very unlike Disney in that manner true so yeah they're they kind of i think they can be quite loose when it comes to that sort of thing can't they but not with the old stuff they've, they, they've got better strict they've got better when they did tangled i think tangled was a stepping stone towards them going yeah we movie. need to change things with regards to how the princesses are put across and how men are put across and a lot of other things but like yes yeah, led to them now feeling comfortable enough to do that scene that's in the trailer and i am say like it's a brave move in a lot of ways but i think it's a good move in a lot of ways as yeah, well yeah like fair play to them absolutely the big wigs are gradually changing to younger generations who are willing to take the piss a bit more but also make a point at the same time <laughs> true but yeah there's a trailer there go and have a look Watch looks like it. a good film it's on our Facebook page, as are all the trailers that we've mentioned. Yes. Which, of course, you can find at Snoo with the Crew. Just go and search for that on Facebook. And you'll find a competition post, as we mentioned earlier on there as well. Go and have a look at that. All, everything you need to know is on the post, to be fair. And we've already mentioned it earlier on in the podcast, so I won't bother repeating myself. If you'd like to write into us about anything else, though, anything you've seen that you'd like us to review or any opinions you have on anything at all, whether it be us or any movies or shows or anything at all, let us know. Snoo with the crew at gmail.com. You can tweet at us. You can find us on Facebook. You can write us a letter if you want to secure Adam's a pigeon. library in cows. Yeah. Yeah. S- secure a note to a pigeon's foot. Um, and, and what? Just send it off into the wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. It'll get to us eventually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it'll yeah, find just, its way here. Just stick it in a forest somewhere. Yeah. We'll, we'll find it. Don't worry. Honourable mentions for Libsyn and Stitcher. Yeah, definitely. For, for creating Disney princesses. and Someone had to. Because someone had to. <laughs> it might as well be them. And have we got anything else we need to stick in? Is that it? Should we mention the competition once more? Competition. There's a competition. Yeah. Go and enter it. Yeah. It's for a, a very nice McFarlane toy. Rewind yeah. to the beginning of the show if you haven't. Or <laughs> listen to us say it again in a minute. Or go and find it online. 
Chris will probably just drop just it again here at the it. end. Yeah, that makes it yeah. a lot easier. Yeah, we probably babbled through it the first time, but yeah, have a, do- have a listen to it again, and then if you're not sure, go to Facebook and look at the post, and Twitter and look at the post. Thanks very much for listening, guys. Bye, bye, bye. Ta ta. We'll catch you next week with two shows. Bye, bye, bye. And that information on the uh, the competition is coming right about now. <laughs> That wasn't a clever sound effect. That's me just going, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Strangeworldcollectibles.co.uk are denoting a Stranger Things 11, 7-inch figure. Yeah, the character 11, the not character 11. 11 figures. One figure of 11. <laughs> and uh, that's, did I say from McFarlane Toys? McFarlane Toys, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so good quality, like made using uh, well, like laser cutty technology yeah. stuff. You Laser chamber technology. That's the one. And, yes, we have a post on our Facebook page explaining all of this, so please go and go and find that post. It's new with the crew, of course, is our Facebook page. Yeah, on there you'll find the two parts to the question, which I'll read out to you anyway. Uh, first part is Rodimus Prime, or Hot Rodimus, actually. Mm-hmm. His, uh, his stats, Ross read them out on our snooze button show from the 31st of last month, which was only last week. We'd like to know them, please. That's the answer to your first question. You can find them online as well. You don't have to listen to the show, but of course we'd prefer it if you did. Second part of the question, which movie would you personally like to see remade and why? So to enter, all you've got to do is email the answer to both of those questions to us. That's snoowiththecrew at gmail.com. You could send it as a Facebook message as well if you wanted to. That's absolutely fine. Just do it privately, otherwise you'll give your answers away. Exactly. But we'll be choosing our favourites from the part two of that question to pick the winner anyway. So, yes. So get the first part right and then give us an answer and if you're the lucky winner... Make it good. Make it good. Good remake and why. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun.